And I just want And I just want to say my journey ends here today, indeed. You have been a good, you know, steward of God. A, a, we thank you for, for, for being such a good captain of our ship this week. May God bless you and your household. Over to you, my pastor. Thank you very much, sister. Where are you going to? I... I'm told that people who come here don't leave. <laughs> but thank you very much. It has been a privilege. It has been a privilege to serve with you. Um, uh, this morning, thank you very much uh, for the kind welcome. And uh, thank you very much, uh, members of this, uh, this um, virtual prayer ministry. And I notice... Uh, Folks that join this make it, uh, they make it their lifestyle. I mean, they, 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 they come, they join, and some are invited to present. And after that, they become part of this. And uh, it, for some reasons, it grows on, on a person. Um, this morning, I'm going to uh, read from a passage that is familiar to all of us. The book of Luke. I'm going to be looking at the parable, one of the parables that Jesus Christ uh, told to answer a question. But now I think you are, you are all aware, you are all familiar with this, the three parables in Luke chapter, Luke chapter 15. Uh, verses one and two, it's, it's simply an introduction. And, Jesus, and, and, and it actually gives a background, little background why Jesus told this uh, parable. Uh, the Pharisees and the scribes complained because he mingled with people that were not in their minds, in the minds of the Pharisees and scribes. These were the people that Jesus Christ should have kept a social distance from them. And, and, and lo and behold, they were drawn to him and Jesus Christ was drawn to them and, and they, 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 they he shared the gospel with them. And the Pharisees and scribes complained about this association. So uh, from verses 4 to verse uh, 7, uh, Jesus Christ, as a way of answering, he told, he related a parable of a lost ship. Uh, uh, yes, the parable of the lost ship. And he, that is captured in five verses. Then the next parable is the parable of the lost coin which is captured in three verses. It's one of the shortest parable, the parable of the lost coin. Then there is a parable of the lost son. The parable of the lost son, for some reasons, received more airtime, more verses, uh, because it is related within uh, 22 verses. So this parable received more um, and continues to receive uh, quite a number of attention. There has been quite a number of sermons preached, uh, lessons taught from this parable of the lost son. And, uh, and also the parable of the lost sheep. You hear a lot of uh, preaching, teachings, lessons drawn from this parable. But with the parable of the lost coin, and um, given that in terms of the stat statistics of the verses, it is given only three verses. Um, and it is the, the, the title there is the parable of the lost coin. Let's read this. I want to focus the, our attention on this parable, which is not that much that, that popular among the, par the parables, the parable of the lost coin. Uh, uh, this is Luke 15, verse 8, 9, and 10. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? Verse 9. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Uh, verse 10. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in heaven. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Uh, may God continue to bless the, 
the reading of his of his word now and forevermore amen um the, for 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 uh, for this for this morning the title that i've uh, given to this parable is god's amazing grace for the lost silver coin like sinner I'm, 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 I'm still confused about that topic but i'm not confused about the god's amazing grace but the title is God's Amazing Grace for the Lost Silver Coin-like Sinner. In other words, there are sinners that are similar to the lost silver coin. This is going to be the focus. This is going to be the focus of our attention this morning. And I'm happy that this is just the three verses. We will not spend much time as we would have spent uh, with the parable of the sheep and the parable of the lost son. Um, obviously, Luke is the one who's relating this parable. He captured this parable. Jesus Christ is one who's, who's relating the parable, but Luke documented them. Luke was fascinated by these stories. Whenever he saw those that were marginalized, so to say, uh, being drawn to Jesus, Luke would document such stories. Whenever you would see women or beggars or lost sons or widows, uh, those that were on the peripherals of the, of the, of the stories, those that, the onlookers, those that were not, those who, who, who the, the spotlight was not shining on them, Luke would be focusing on those. And for some reasons, Jesus himself would always focus while everyone is doing other things, Christ would zoom in to a person lying there for the eight for 38 years. When others would be focusing on other people, Christ would look at the person marginalized by the society. Uh, this was the this was the devotion of uh, of Luke. He was very interested, and and incidentally, it was also the attention of Jesus Christ. Uh, Luke is saying to us, people are important. This is the teaching that he's giving to us. People are important. And, and he's also saying Jesus valued people. He valued everyone. And, and I think Luke is also saying to us, people must be important to us. We must value uh, people. Uh, let's go back. Let's come back to this uh, parable of the lost silver coin. Lost silver coin. And, 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 and Jesus when he told this story, maybe, maybe just to give a little as to where they were at that time, where the, 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 the context, where this took place. It, it appears that Christ was journeying from Galilee to Jerusalem. He was on a trip. They were going to Jerusalem for a Passover. And the setting of these three parables, including the one that we are focusing our attention on this morning, it appears that the setting there, the venue for this parable was somewhere between Galilee and Jerusalem. And, and, and Luke does not specify the, the exact venue, but we know that it was around the, the Passover feast. And, and, and Jesus Christ, knowing that uh, 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 things, the events were going to be taking place in Jerusalem, and this is Passover, and 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 he was about to become a sacrificial lamb, and he was about to die at the cross, and and something there was a greater purpose that was weighing on his mind, and and the audience, of course, the disciples, the Pharisees, the scribes, and 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 the sinners, and the sinners, according to the Pharisees. And, and we know, the, all the, you all know the story. They started memorying, what, what's wrong with this, this man? Why is he keeping this kind of company? Now, you might think that they were actually giving, uh, they were, they were, you, you, you might think they were actually commending Christ, or they might, you might think that they were actually giving him credit for drawing sinners to him. But actually, they were complaining. I, I want to believe that they were saying, if you claim to be who you are, a teacher sent from heaven, why associate with these? Uh, isn't it true that the birds of the same feathers flock together? Is it, is it not that true? Aren't you, aren't you sympathetic with them because there are some commonalities with your character and theirs? 
and it, it, it sounded like a compliment, but it, I don't think it was a compliment. I don't think that it was a compliment. I think they were actually accusing Jesus Christ. I think they were making some insinuations that Jesus Christ might be one of them. That's why you attract them. Now, Bible students have dealt with this passage and they've, they've, they've read this passage. They, they've read the three parables and some of them are saying, don't separate them because these three parables are actually one. They are actually three parables, but telling and explaining one story so that the story is one. It has three perspectives. Okay, that's, that's another view about the, about the parables. We will not get, in, get into that. And they, they argue that one parable is not enough to tell the whole truth. Maybe there, there's some truth in that, uh, but we'll not follow that because I think it will take our attention from the lost coin. Some have said uh, possibly this, these three parables, although Christ was responding to the Pharisees and the scribes. But could it be that these three parables are, are, are actually teaching us about the doctrine of Trinity? And, and, and to, to, to explain that, they say, uh, Jesus Christ, who's the shepherd carrying the lost sheep, represents actually Jesus. And the shepherd who's carrying the sheep represents Jesus Christ. And when they look at the parable of the lost silver coin and the woman looking for it and they say could this be the holy spirit and the church looking for sinners and when they look at the parable of the prodigal son and they look at the father and they say could it be that this is the father in heaven receiving a lost sinner it's it's it's, it's a good argument and uh, it's 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 a nice story to bring it together but jesus i think was not established in this doctrine. I know it is established elsewhere, but I don't think we are, I think we are burdening this Luke 15 if we, if we, if we want to discuss it that way. Now let's look at the interesting features about, let, let's look at the three parables. Then after that, we will go to this one. There the, 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 the are three parables here and two of them, if you notice the two parables you find male persons. You find a shepherd, and I want to believe this is a shepherd because if this shepherd was a female, the passage could have mentioned, just like it mentioned that the woman lost a coin, it should have said the woman shepherd. But in this case, I want to believe that this shepherd was a male and you have a shepherd, a male who lost a sheep. Then you have a father, another male with two sons. Then you have four males in these three parables. Then you only have one female in the parable of the lost coin. So, and, and this parable is given uh, just three verses. The other one, five verses, the lost sheep and the law and the lost at the prodigal son. It enjoys the attention of more a time. It enjoys 22 verses. And, uh, and, 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 and let's proceed with it. Let's proceed with these parables this parable. Now, let's leave the other two, that is the lost sheep and the lost or the prodigal son, the lost son. Let's, let's ignore them for now and focus on the one that has been given three, three verses. This is a woman who's seeking who has lost. Uh, according to the passage, she had 10 silver coins and she lost one. Now, others have looked into her environment because the passage says when she could not find one of her 10 lost coins, she ransacked the house. She did a, clean, a spring cleaning in the house. She swept the house. She looked everywhere. She couldn't find it. And she went back and she looked for, the, she looked for the, this lost coin. Some are looking at the story and say, and try to look at the setting what kind of homes did they live in, in, the, in, the, in the Near East? And uh, they describe the homes as small homes with a little uh, a hole for the window. And, which is, and the, the homes were almost at any given time, whether it's during the day, they, were, they would be dark. So it would be difficult for her to find, it, to find the lost coin if she lost it. And in this case, 
according to the parable, she lost this coin. I'm not going to get uh, into the details why she had those coins and how she lost the coin, but the parable says she lost a coin. Now, the coin, according to those that know, they say yeah, with this coin, the value of the coin was actually equivalent with the day salary, the denaria during the, the first century or during the time of the New Testament. So if one if one had just one coin, so you would, you, you would have a coin that has a value of a day wage or the, the, the money that you would be paid if you work for that day. Or sometimes they would even use the Roman soldier as a standard. I, uh, the denaria is based on the, the wages that, is being, that, 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 that was paid to the, to the Roman soldiers. So this woman had 10, uh, lost their coins. In other words, she had almost 10 days of, of, of money, the money that one would have worked for for 10 days. Okay, let's now look at this, the lost coin. And, and I'm, I, I, I keep on asking myself, what kind of sinner is a silver lost coin? What kind of sinner is that? I, um, it's easy to describe the sheep uh, it's normal for the sheep to, to, to drift away from the fold and land up in the bush, in the bush and, 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 and not be able to find their way back. And the shepherd, makes sense, the shepherd will have to go and leave others to look for this sheep. Um, then it's, it's, it's easier to explain the actions, the choices of the prodigal son. He, leave, he makes a decision, he leaves. And the father does not even send a search party to go look for him. Son, you make a decision to leave, you will come back if you want to. But with this one, the lost coin, now the, 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 the coin, the silver coin cannot decide, cannot make a choice, cannot leave, cannot, cannot help the one who's searching for it. It's just helpless. It cannot think, it cannot do anything. And, and, and I ask myself a question, what kind of sinner is this? Uh, and and the, this lost coin did not decide to be lost, did not try to escape. The, the parable says it got lost in the house. So it did not leave like the prodigal son who went to a faraway country, did not drift like a lost sheep, live in the fold. This one is in the house, did not go, go away. Um, what kind of sinner is this? And, and, and how did the coin get lost in the house? How did that happen? And, and according to the story, it appears that they would be bound together, but this one, for some reasons, accidentally got loose from the, 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 the from the other 10 and they were bound together. And it went, when she counted, she, she realized that, hey, I'm left with nine. But what happened? Did she, did she contribute to the law to 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 this crisis? Uh, because I don't think the lost coin decided to be lost. Because it cannot think, it cannot do anything. Could it be that we are dealing with sinners who did not choose to be in their situation, but they are in their situation because of human hands, because we said things to them, because we were careless to them, or we omitted care towards them. What, what, what happened to this kind of sinner? Or maybe we committed things or we failed to do things and, and they ended up being lost accidentally. And, and according to this parable, it appears that uh, the woman the one who lost the, 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 lost, the, 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 the silver coin, did not rest. The, the passage says she diligently looked for the, this lost coin and she looked for it. She swept the house. She did everything she could do and she kept on doing it until she found this lost silver coin. Now, if she, if she, if, if it happened that she swept the house and could not find it, there was no way that this silver coin would have found its way back to the other group or to the other 10. 
what, what are we discussing here? What, what is Jesus saying to us? What, what kind of sinner is this? Could it be that Jesus Christ is discussing those that have been defaced or continuously, continuously molested by their loved ones for years, those that suffered in the hands of other people, as a result, they don't have the capacity to respond to love or to respond to anything. They are simply broken. What, what, what is he saying to us? What kind of sinner is a lost coin sinner? It, could it be that Christ is talking about our young people who have been defaced by Nyaupe or tech or hardcore drugs, uh, drugs that have the, the drugs that can alter even the personality of a child? What, what is he talking about here? Uh, 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 I'm told, I'm instructed that uh, people who are on hardcore drugs, uh, uh, if, if you try to rehabilitate them, the success, success rate is between five and seven percent. Could it be that my Jesus was referring to this kind of story? Uh, and, and, and they are lost not because, not because they chose to, because that lost coin did not choose to be lost. And, and I ask, what kind of sinner is this? What kind of lost coin is this? Uh, did, did someone do something to cause this? But I'm comforted this morning that God's amazing grace will not stop at anything until this lost silver coin, this lost silver coin like sinner is found. I'm comforted that, you know, you know but, but maybe let me say this. There, there are times when, um, when we see a silver lost coin-like sinners uh, 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 drifting towards the church uh, uh, and looking like uh, uh, under the influence, the substance influence, looking like, and, and we see that they are drifting towards the gate of the church and we caution the deacon that, hey, if, if you don't take care of this, we will be in trouble. And at that time, grace is driving this person towards home. And, 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 and the Pharisees are uncomfortable with what they are seeing. Could it be that sometimes we are not ready for the lost silver coin like sinners? You have stories, you have had stories where where we're during the camp meeting and the pastor is praying for someone, uh, in the name of Jesus, come out of him, of her or, or, or him, in the name of Jesus. And this goes on for 20, 30 minutes. And, and someone whispers to the pastor and says, pastor, uh, last camp meeting, we went through this route. Pastor, even the previous camp meeting, pastor, we went through the same person. Pastor, ten, we have been going through this, but pastor, food is getting cold. We need to go back in the afternoon and, and, and continue teaching. Uh, leave this. We have tried. We have been through this route with a dead end. Uh, this sounds familiar. And, and this happens whenever, whenever grace is dealing with a silver, lost silver coin like sinner. But I'm comforted this morning, saints, I'm comforted this morning that grace, amazing grace, amazing grace will not stop even if saints stop. Amazing grace will not stop. It will try again and again, and again, sweep the house again, and again, and again, until grace hears a tinkling sound of a coin. Then grace stops and say, I found my coin. Look, it has been defaced, but it is still my silver coin. Come and rejoice with me. And I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged this morning that we serve a God who does not give up on us. Sometimes we give up and we say, 
I'm, I, I have nothing to do with you. I have nothing to do with the situation. You have, a, you have been an embarrassment to this family, but God's amazing grace will sweep the house and sweep the house and sweep among the rebels and look among and under the dead and find this almost defaced lost silver coin like sinner. And, 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 then, and, and, and then throw a party and say, I found my sinner. I found my child. I pray that we will not give up because God's amazing grace does not give up. It goes on and on and on until a silver coin like sinner is found and brought back home. I pray that the Lord will bless us this morning. Amen. 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 Muruti, what kind of a sinner are you? We thank God indeed for his amazing grace. For